Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will continue the representation theory of SL to C. So, I will first uh, recall what we did in the last lecture. So, what we did? We started with actually finite dimensional irreducible representation of capital V and established a very nice basis of that uh, capital V. So, let, let me just recall. So, say V is actually finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL to C. Okay. So, if you recall, so what we did? So, step 1, so we actually looked at the action of H on V and then took mu to be eigenvalue of this H. Because we are working over complex numbers, there exists an eigenvalue and then we take V to be Eigen vector corresponding to this Eigen value. In particularly, we have H V equal to mu V. Okay. So then, if you denote V gamma by the gamma th Eigen space of this H, okay. So that means by definition, this is those W in V such that H w is given to be gamma w, where gamma is in C. So, then we realized that uh, if you apply x on this v gamma, so that should be subset of v gamma plus 2. Okay? And then if you apply y on this v gamma, so that should be subset of v gamma minus 2. Okay? This is something we verified directly using the commutator relations. Okay? So, now if you go back to this uh, mu, so then what we realize because uh, if you apply x on v and then x square on v and so on, then at some point uh, we have to stop. So, we take k to be minimal such that x power k v is actually non-zero and x power k plus 1 v is 0. So, why such k exist? Because x v, x square v and so on, they all corresponds to distinct eigenvalues of uh, h. Okay. V will corresponds to mu, then x v corresponds to mu minus 2 and x square v is mu minus 4 and so on. So, this is all h eigenvalues. So, that actually says uh, that uh, because we are working uh, inside finite dimensional representation, so there must exist some k such that x power k plus 1 v is 0. So, now you choose k minimal so that this x power k v is non-zero. So, that all this mu, mu minus 2 etcetera, mu minus 2 k uh, sorry mu plus 2, mu plus 4 and so on, mu plus 2 k all of them are Eigen values of uh, this uh, operator H acting on capital V, but mu plus 2 k plus 1 is not an Eigen value. Okay. So, in particularly what we did, we replaced lambda by this mu plus 2 k and then v naught by this uh, x power k v. Then we realize that h acts on v naught as lambda v naught and then x acts on this v naught as 0. Okay. So, this kind of vectors we called maximal vector. So, once we have this maximal vector, so, then what we uh, immediately did, we looked at how this y acts on this v naught. So, you look at v naught and so on. So, then as before, there will be some r such that y power r v naught will be non-zero, but y power r plus 1 v naught is 0. Again using the earlier argument, there exists r in g plus such that this happens. Okay. So, that implies we immediately saw that if you take this span of this v naught, y v naught, etcetera, y power r v naught. So, that is indeed SL2 invariant. So, that makes this into a whole space because v is being irreducible. Okay. And then we saw that with this respect to this nice basis, okay, if you call v i equal to y power i v naught, then we had this very nice uh, uh, action of this SL2C on 
this uh, V i ok. So, that is given by the following uh, uh, identities the first one h acting on V i b lambda minus 2 i V i and uh, second is y acting on V i will be V i plus 1 and third thing is x V i is nothing but i times lambda minus i plus 1 V i minus 1. So, where we understand that V minus 1 is 0 ok and this is all true for all i greater than or equal to 1. I get on equal to 0. So, using this formulas we concluded that H acts diagnosably on uh, capital V and then uh, from this formula 2 you can easily see that Y acts nilpotently on capital V. Similarly, uh, X also acts nilpotently on capital V ok. So, observations H acts semi simply or diagonally on capital V and then X and Y both act nilpotently on capital V ok. These are all the observation and not only that this lambda has to be R and all the Eigen values must be R, R minus 2 etcetera minus R plus 2 minus R. So, these are all the Eigen values and the corresponding Eigen values uh, sorry Eigen spaces must be one dimensional that is what we saw ok. So, these are all the Eigen values of H acting on C uh, sorry acting on V and if you take this V R minus 2 I this is spanned by just Y power I V naught which is just V I. Okay. So, this is what uh, we saw in the last class, but now the question is uh, this is actually allows us to define a uh, map from isomorphism classes of finite dimensional irreducible representations of S L to C to uh, this uh, non negative integers, uh, but the question is why this map is surjective. So, we still have not established uh, any uh, irreducible representation explicitly corresponding to given uh, non negative integer. So, that is what we are actually going to do ok. So, what we do? So, we actually going to prove this following theorem. So, this is actually kind of classifies uh, completely all finite dimensional irreducible representations of S L to C. So, in one side what we do? We take this set of all isomorphism classes of finite dimensional irreducible representations of S L to C ok. So, then on the other side what we do we take this non negative integers. So, what is the map? So, map is very natural you take this class V and then send it to dimension V minus 1 because recall the relation this R has to be dimension V minus 1. Okay, basically this R captures all the information about uh, this time this capital V and uh, it is clear that uh, this map is actually well defined because if you take two isomorphic uh, reducible representation the dimensions will be same. So, this number will be same ok. So, what we need to check? We need to check this map is surjective as well as injective. To prove this map is surjective there are many ways actually one can check. So, I will leave it to you to check the following thing very abstractly without actually getting into the actual representation what one can do one can actually define abstractly you start with the space ok which is of dimension r plus 1 take uh, v to be just a span of v naught etcetera v r ok v 1 etcetera v r. So, then what do you do? You just define the action of S L to C on this abstract vector space using the formulas ok. H v i equal to lambda minus 2 i v i and then uh, y v i equal to v i plus 1 and then x v i to be i times lambda minus i plus 1 v i minus 1. 
So, if you define uh, the action of SL to C using this formulas again for i greater than or equal to 0 and then with the convention that v minus 1 is 0. So, then you can actually prove that this defines well defined action of SL to C on capital V. Okay. So, I leave it to you to check. So, this defines well defined action of SL to C on capital V. So, what is uh, what one supposed to actually check? So, we have to check if you take the commutators of these corresponding elements. For example, if you take the bracket x y then you should actually you should be able to get h that is the thing you have to check. For example, you can see easily see that the basis if you fix to be this v naught sorry v naught v 1 etcetera v r. So, then the matrix of x with respect to this basis you can see that. So, this i goes to i minus 1. So, in particularly for 0 it is 0. So, x v naught is 0. So, this this is going to be just a 0 0 0 and then x v 1 it is going to be 1 times r minus 1 plus 1 times v naught. So, this is just r v naught. Okay. So, that is going to be r here and then 0 elsewhere and then x v 2 you can see that this is twice r minus 2 plus 1 v 1. So, that is twice r minus 1. Okay. So, this is twice r minus 1 v 1 0 and everywhere else is 0. Okay. So, it is clear that on the diagonal all the entries will be 0 only the first off diagonal entries will have entries and all other things will be 0. Okay. So, this is going to be this uh, a strictly upper triangular matrix okay, with the entries only in the first off diagonal okay, on the top of the diagonal. So, that is very clear. Similarly, if you look at what will happen to this uh, matrix of y with respect to the same basis. So, this will be again lower triangular matrix. So, it is strictly lower triangular where the entries will be here on the first off diagonal which is below this diagonal entry. Again what will be the matrix of h? The matrix of h will be just your diagonal matrix because h v i is nothing but lambda minus 2 i v i. So, this will be just r r minus 2 etcetera minus r plus 2 minus r all other entries will be 0. Okay. Now, what we need to check if you take the commutator of these two, okay, then you need to check this has to be exactly equal to the matrix H. Okay, this is something you need to check. Similarly, you have to check for all other commutator relations. So, I will leave it to you to check. So, it is not very hard, it is just basically a matrix multiplication with this specific matrices. So, that indeed proves that given any R, so you have this R plus 1 dimensional space on which this SL to C is actually acting. So, you have a representation of SL to C. Now, it is not hard to prove that this V must be irreducible. So, that is uh, just follows from following argument. So, if you have this well defined action on this capital V, so then let us say W is actually a proper sub module of V. Okay. So, then what will happen? So, let us say W is actually non zero module, okay. let us not assume anything about proper. So, let us say it is a non zero module, then there will be a W inside this w okay which will be again eigen vector of h because h is acts on 
w okay because w being sl2 sub module okay this is let us say sl2 sub module so this h must act on w so in particularly there exists w and w such that h w will have this uh, eigen value mu okay so this mu has to be one of the eigen value as before okay this mu has to come from r r minus 2 etc minus r plus 2 and then minus r because the eigen values of entire eigen value h eigen values of this uh, capital v is this list so it has to come from that so in particularly uh, note that uh, the eigen spaces corresponding to this each eigen value they are all one dimensional so this w must be some scalar times uh, whatever uh, that uh, vi okay this mu has to be some r minus 2i and this w must be some scalar times vi by replacing that scalar we can assume to be this is exactly vi okay so that proves this vi is inside w okay now look at the action of h uh, sorry x and y so if you if you actually use if suppose vi is there if you use the action of y then from this vi you will be able to go to vi plus 1 similarly from vi plus 1 you can go to vi plus 2 and so on okay so since this vi is in this w by applying y vi you get vi plus 1 so that has to be in w similarly that proves that uh, by applying another v y we get v i plus 2 is also in w and so on. So, that proves that v j is in w for all j greater than or equal to i. Now, what happens to uh, uh, if you what happens if you apply x on v i if you apply x on v i you can see that this actually reduces the indices up to some non zero scalar this i times lambda minus i plus 1 it will be never 0 for this lambda coming from yeah this lambda is r basically. So, it will be never 0. Uh, so, that that says that if you apply uh, x then x v i which will be some non zero scalar multiple of v i minus 1 that has to be in w. So, that proves that v i minus 1 will be in w and that proves that v i minus 2 will be in w and so on. So, that proves that v j will be in w for all j less than or equal to i. So, this actually implies all v j are in w for all j from 0 to r that proves that capital V is subset of w ok. So, that proves that v is w. So, by choosing uh, this one Eigen vector of h we can see that by applying repeatedly x and y we get all other Eigen vectors ok. So, that way we recover this capital V uh, entirely from one Eigen vector. So, that makes this uh, W equal to V. So, that proves that V is must be irreducible if, if V actually satisfies uh, these conditions ok. So, this is abstractly proving that uh, given uh, non negative integer there exists actually uh, irreducible representation uh, whose dimension is just a dim uh, r plus 1 ok that actually proves that this map is surjective ok this map is surjective. So, from the same argument you can also see that this map is injective why because uh, suppose uh, you we have let us say two representation irreducible representation of S L to C such that the dimension of V minus 1 is same as dimension of W minus 1 then that will imply that dimension of V equal to dimension W ok. Now, we know that there exists a basis for this capital V such that it is given by this v naught v 1 etcetera v r. Similarly, there exists a basis for this w which is also given by w naught w 1 etcetera w r where the action of 
h x y they are all given in this formula okay this star. So, that means you can just simply map uh, this v i to w i and then we can define a map from v to w call it phi and uh, it is easy exercise to see that this phi is an isomorphism and phi is also SL2 homomorphism okay F SL2 module homomorphism. So, that proves this phi must be actually gives isomorphism between uh, this uh, two SL2 modules this, this is SL2 module isomorphs. So, that proves that uh, the map that we have defined is indeed injective. So, that means that we have established bijective correspondence between the set of all isomorphism classes of finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL2C and this non-negative integers. Okay. So, we, we know like completely all information about uh, uh, a given uh, finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL2C using our analysis. Okay. So, but what I want to do like I want to give actually very explicit construction of uh, this uh, representation. Okay. So, for that we need to actually recall how SL2C is acting on uh, this uh, two variable polynomials. Okay. So, using that action one can actually see that if you take any homogeneous space, so that will be actually uh, corresponding to irreducible representation. Okay. So, I will actually uh, leave all the uh, checking as exercise. So, basically you need to establish a basis on that basis uh, the basis elements of SL2C acts the way that we have seen in uh, general finite dimensional irreducible representation. Okay. So, what we do to make our life easy we denote using this uh, isomorphism uh, for d in uh, g plus. So, whatever that uh, uh, irreducible representation that we are getting from d we denote it by v d. Okay. So, that will be the isomorphism classes of okay, the isomorphism classes of SL2 C irreducible representation that having d plus 1 dimension. Okay. So, that unique isomorphism class we call it uh, V d. So, whenever I say V d that is actually irreducible representation of uh, SL 2 C whose dimension is d plus 1. Okay. So, now what we are going to do we are going to explicitly construct uh, these representations. So, for which we are actually going to take this infinite dimensional space. So, call it uh, C u v. So, this is just a, a polynomial polynomials in two commuting variables. Okay. Polynomials in two commuting variables u v again over complex numbers. Okay. So, now what we do we define this SL2 action on this polynomial ring or polynomial algebra. Okay. So, how it is given it is given as follows if you take some element for P in C u v you take x p to be just u times dou p by dou v okay. and similarly y p to be v times dou p by dou u. And now once you are given x and y action it is easy to create what is h action. So, recall h is nothing but the bracket x y. So, in particularly the h action of on p has to be u 
okay so basically x y p minus y x p okay so you can just work it out and then see what it is so basically y p will be v do p by do u and then x will be u do of this divided by do v okay minus similarly v do by do u u do p by do v so if you do the computation then what we get so do of do v v do p by do u is nothing but do p by do u plus do by do v do p by do u okay so similarly do by do u u do p by do v is nothing but do p by do v plus u do by do v do p by do v okay sorry here it's v so then if you plug in back and then you can see that h dot p should be equal to uh, u times this so u do p by do u plus u v do by do v do p by do u uh, and then minus v times do p by do v minus u v do by do u do p by do v okay so you can actually these two things are same so this will get cancelled so you get uh, hp by u do p by do u minus v do p by do v okay so you can just uh, use the commutator relations to get uh, how h will act on this c c v so this is indeed actually tells you that uh, so there is a unique way actually this is going to act if you know the action of h and y now it is not very hard to prove that uh, like this is indeed giving you action of uh, sl2c on this cuv so that i will leave it to you to check okay so check that so this gives us action of sl to c on cuv okay now what is more if you take this uh, what is called this uh, uh, homogeneous spaces okay what is homogeneous spaces so that is span by elements of this form so take v of d to be span of all u power i v power j where the degree of this uh, monomial should be all same okay that should be equal to d so this is those i j in g plus such that i plus j equal to d so you take this v of d inside your c u v okay so then it is easy to check this v of d is indeed s l 2 sub module of c u v okay again check this v of d is sl 2 c sub module of c u v okay by establishing very explicit uh, basis so which is already given here you can see that this v of d is indeed sl 2 c irreducible representation okay so this is all something I, I, I would like to leave it to you to check this is all now very explicit calculations okay for example if you take the dimension of this vd so given i this j must be d minus i so you can see that the choices of for i is just 0 to d okay 
So, that makes this V of d has dimension d plus 1 and then using the formulas you can explicitly calculate and then see how this x, y and h acts on this uh, basis elements and then it will be clear like uh, uh, how, how you can actually get uh, something related to what we have already established. Okay, that I will leave it to you to check. Uh, I will actually uh, uh, continue with the lecture uh, uh, later. Okay, I will prove this uh, complete reducibility for uh, for this uh, finite dimensional representation of SL2C in the next lecture. I will stop here.